Welcome to Switch It Up. We are gonna switch it up on you today. We're gonna to do some RV tips. I think that's what we're gonna do. We haven't done one of these in a long time, but after now driving 50,000 miles in Trek and towing approximately 25, 27,000 miles, the truck keeps track how many miles I've actually towed. And then just RV life in general. And we're boondocking right now outside of Mount St. Helens. And we've been boondocking for like four, three, four days, three days. I think we can give you some valuable insight on like if you're getting ready to start the RV life and you've just bought your rig, what are the top four things that you should consider upgrading immediately and spending money on right out of the box? Like, and it would make your life so much better than to, to wait. Like to do it now, to spend probably under $5,000 for all of these things and you would just really, really be happy. I'm going to load up the bikes, we might talk about those too. And we're going to roll the intro, when I come back we're going to jump into it. Might be our shortest video ever, wow, maybe, and Sheila's packing up now so we can get her input. Alright, roll the intro. A man and a woman left their home. You know, as I was loading the bikes up, I was thinking, I wasn't gonna add bikes to this video and we're gonna start out right with it, and maybe not count it as one, but you're more than likely going to look at buying electric bikes right out of the box. And honestly, you should. In the RV life, there's many, many reasons to have them. One, if you're gonna be a Thousand Trails member, you're gonna find out right away that the sites are not assigned. So you're gonna be towing around your fifth wheel or your travel trailer or whatever to try to find your site and it is the most frustrating thing about that membership that nobody really talks about but you some of those campgrounds are just ups and downs and hills and some of them don't have the roads done really well and they're older we generally will take Sheila's bike off let her ride ahead while I park and for her to go find a spot for us to camp. Number two, electric bikes, boondocking. We are boondocking right now and it's actually great because we're right on a road. This is NF83, past those trees is Mount St. Helens. So we are in Washington. But in boondocking, a lot of times, you'll come off a nice road and you'll have like a gravel road that goes back to an area where you can boondock. Again, if you have a big rig, and you're not, you know, you don't have a tra uh, uh, somebody following you or a follow vehicle to go check that out. A lot of times we can use an electric bike, s go down the path, find a good area before we commit where there's nowhere to turn around. So electric bikes are fabulous. It's not on my list, but after putting them on, we've drove over 500 miles on these. Would I recommend a specific brand? No. All electric bikes basically are made from China. They slap different logos, different um, styles on them. You'll find out right away that customer service generally is horrific if anything goes wrong with them. So now you're basically, there's a couple of them that are made in the United States. I'm not gonna mention them. You can find out for yourself. Some of them are foldable. Some of them are bigger. We chose ours just off of research and we wanted something bigger that we could ride on the beach. Are we happy? We've gone over 500 miles on these bikes. We've gone on beaches, we've gone on mountain biking, We've I've done a lot of things and we've beat them completely to pieces. Ground off one of the handlebars because they fall. Am I happy with the bike? Yes, for the amount of money that we've spent versus going with some of the name brands that run five and six thousand dollars when you can buy two of these for half the price and if they break you're not crying over spilt milk basically. So you can choose who you're looking for but I think if you're gonna look starting straight out you should look for some sort of electric bike or if you're really adventurous i love my my um electric scooter love it varla makes that i will say that because that thing's incredible but not everyone wants to go 40 miles an hour on a scooter okay i have to finish this up then we'll get to the meat of the things 
but I thought I would share. We put them back here on the back of the, on travel days if it's not going to rain. Electric bikes do not do good in the rain. You need to be aware of that. And it's not because of these components. It's because of this component. And if it gets water in it, it shorts out everything. Travel days, they can be outside. If it's not gonna rain, they go inside if it is gonna rain. Hopefully that answers that. Let me finish this up real quick. Why am I using all these ratchets to keep it together? We learned the hard way that these mechanisms sometimes fail. This falls down, the bike falls this way, drags along the road for five or six miles and does damage. Probably should secure those, it's a tip. Most do not come with a trailer hitch on the back. We actually invested in that. This is not another tip, just a side note again, is that we went ahead and had a hitch put in I think it was like four or five hundred dollars it was a really good investment for putting things on the back even though we have a toy hauler which if you haven't watched our videos contains a motorcycle two kayaks a grill and chairs and washer dryer this thing's full the bikes do fit it's just easier to not have them in there if we don't have to let's jump to the heart of things shall we we've been side noted a lot My first tip, as you can see all of this wonderful room in the back of my truck, my first tip is to ditch your normal hitching up system and go with a ball. I mean, look at this. I don't have to pull anything out. It's, it's, there's junk back here. That's, that we can, that's another video. I've got issues. And there is a two by four. That's a whole different story. But the ball, see, I, I, I all of this room, kayaks i throw the bikes in i never have to lift anything out or try to attach something and make sure it's attached properly and i don't have that stress i eliminated that before we even picked up our fifth wheel i eliminated that because i did some research my first tip for an upgrade to spend money on if you have a fifth wheel is to go with a goose box from reese i can't say enough good things i've done a whole video on it i'll post it up here so you can see the link this road actually in the morning from, well, at night, from about six o'clock to about seven this morning, not one car. It was dead quiet. It was kind of eerily quiet with the woods and stuff. I'm pretty sure Bigfoot's back there, but. Okay, so here, Reese. So basically I back up, the ball goes on, hitches right away, latches on. I just pull the lever. Depending on your state, depends on if you need safety chains or not, because it has the electrical mechanism that if it detaches, it locks up the brakes electrically. In here, there's an airbag, and then you actually have two shocks on the back. So chucking and porpoising and things like that when you're going down the highway. Granted, we have gone over, I, I would, 50,000 miles on the truck and about 27,000 miles of that has actually been towing. I have experienced a lot of horrible roads across the United States from one side to the other. And I cannot say enough good things about having this. Just because we do so much adventure stuff and I'm not a spring chicken, so pulling something off in the middle of the bed and putting it to the side, even if it's aluminum, it's just one more thing I don't want to think about. There's another thing is, is that I've had a good friend. I've had three or four other YouTubers that I've known. They've used the systems that you come, that come with your truck when you first get it, you know, the normal RV system. Here's the problem is, is that I don't know how many videos and I've witnessed it firsthand when you're going to hook up and you don't do the pull test and then they pull forward and the whole rig falls down on the truck. I've seen it now, I, I probably at least five times and I saw it once right outside my window happen. I, I don't, that does not happen with this and I don't need that stress. For 15 to 1500 to $2,000 to pay for it and have it installed right out of the box, probably one of the best things that I think you can do. I, I really do. Now this is for fifth wheels. I promise you travel trailers and van lifers and everything. I got another one right here and it's right in here. That's right, we're underneath. Somebody's gonna ask, well, what's this? This is called indestructible wrap. That's a different video. That's not necessarily an upgrade video, but this game changing right here. I'll turn on the light for you. And you're looking at all this. Do not look at this. It's not important. The Victron stuff, not important. What you need to look at is this. See that? Number one, I don't care what you have. Ditch the batteries that your rig comes with upgrade to lithium ASAP. Don't even hesitate because we hesitated. We, within our first um, week of being on the road as RV newbies, 
well, nobody told us that if you run your batteries down and charge them up that you're going to destroy your batteries and we did that within 10 days we'd run them down because we thought that was normal that's nobody really explains it to you yes i'm a 51 year old man i did not know that and i imagine most of you that are starting out do not know this either we destroyed those batteries it came with two because they wouldn't hold the charge and we were trying to run our refrigerator overnight without running the generator because we were at a boondocking location and in that boondocking location they didn't want the generator running overnight which i understand so unfortunately we just learned that we destroyed the batteries we ran them down depleted them all the way charged them up ran them down and you can't do that lithium you can so when we went to go buy new batteries within that first week we bought four agms which we spent a ton of money on because we were thinking oh, lithium really i mean they're kind of pricey you can look at a 100 amp lithium battery from 800 to 1100 dollars pretty easy and you're like i don't i don't know i mean i guess some 100 amps might go down to like 500 dollars but in general we just weren't thinking that it would be beneficial i'm telling you now if you're going to spend some money right out of the box and you're trying to figure out an upgrade ditch the battery that it, your rig come with i don't care if it's just your your normal travel trailer if it's a van life it's i don't care what it is ditch that battery you will need to change or check the charging component that charges the battery because on here we had to change that out um, to go to a lithium charger i went with enduro batteries because there's a number of factors there's a lot of great brands and you can choose and do your research i encourage you to do that enduro was just one of those things where weight and size became an issue i say that because we have 400 amp hours so we have two 200 amp hour batteries and you can see so the other batteries we had the house the normal ones you get the agms i had four in here and they took up this whole component so a 200 amp hour battery probably runs around that 1200 to 1400 dollars range i don't i don't know for sure you'll have to go to i'll give you a link down below and i think they'll give a 10 percent discount or something i don't know size enduro power batteries a 200 amp hour battery is 25 percent smaller than the normal lithium ion batteries that's important and think of the weight the regular agms and stuff are just super heavy and lithium is just so much lighter and another reason Enduro is customer service. I think they're, they're based in Colorado, so you can call them up, ask questions. They're very, very helpful. Uh, you do not, this is not a solar video. This is a, just ditch your, go to a lithium battery. If you're gonna spend money, just do it right out of the box. You will be so much happier to sleep through the night and not have to worry about having a generator kick on or how your batteries are doing if your refrigerator if you've got a regular refrigerator like we do and not an rv fridge you don't have to worry about that you know you can have it running and not and have enough power to make it through the night and then the next day you can run your generator to charge it up if you don't have solar or the solar will come out and you can have enough just to charge we don't have some fancy fancy system but if you're going to spend i don't know thousand to fifteen hundred dollars that's my tip number two tip number reese that probably is that $1,500 to $1,800 range to have it installed. Tip number two, even if you did a 200 amp hour battery, man, that would be plenty of power for 90% of the people. You're probably around that $1,200 range. You'll be, you'll be super, super happy that you did. Let's go on to tip number three. That's right. You guessed it. Tip number three, a TPMS system, tire pressure monitoring system. There's many, many different varieties. We had uh, a different one when we started and it didn't calculate some of the things that I was really concerned about, which was temperatures. We had reached out and talked to TireMinder and Michael runs that area and he answered all my questions and I just fell in love with them. And it has helped. One, on travel days, you know, we have six tires back here and a lot of road conditions and you don't know what's going on. Dad made a great point when we put one on his um, travel trailer. He said, if a bearing starts going out, everything, the wheel heats up, which heats up your tire, which can cause a blowout. Second thing, when you start losing temp or losing pressure, the temperature goes up and causes a blowout because there's a lot of heat and friction. You need to know driving down the highway and it will just give you so much peace of mind to spend a TPMS system and put on the, right out of the box like don't even don't even think about it now you're going to run prices anywhere from probably 250 to 500 dollars 
depending on how many sensors you need, depending on how big your your rig that you're towing or whatever. The truck itself has its own TPMS built in because it's a 2021 Dodge Ram. And so it has that in, but I needed something for the rig. And I am super, super, super happy with um, our choice. So we went with Tire Minder. Uh, again, I don't know. I think he, he gives us some sort of like a discount for anyone that clicks on the link. So below, I'll put that down there just for you. A lot of these companies will do like these promo codes and things like that for so they can get the word out. And you can get these too, just so you know. Most of the websites that once you start your journey, if you wanted to have tire miner per se, and you wanted to be an affiliate, they call them, you can do that and sign up for free and you can give discounts and promos. And then the person making the video, if you liked it, I think you can get like 5% or I, I don't remember all the details. It's not like our jam. TPMS, that's one of the things that we really, really love. Now we're on it, that's three, right? We've covered the Reese. Now they've got other, other hookups too. So just go to Reese and see if they have something for whatever setup you got. So we got the goose box, number one, spend money immediately on, number two, what did we talk about? The batteries. Man, if I had to put these in priority, I'd probably put lithium above up here because it's such a life-changing thing that you use every single day. When we went with Enduro Power Batteries, there's a lot of great battery companies out there, but that's who we went with because of the things we said. Number three, TPMS system. Spend the money on that. Again, that's gonna be that four or $500 range. Down to the lowest 250. Just find something that would really, really work for you. What's number four? What's one of the most important things that we need in the road and where we are in today's world and it's becoming a hot topic with some satellites and stuff let's go number four that's an omnidirectional antenna when we first started we literally when we first started we were like we got to find a way to have a solution for internet on the road and we i looked and researched and researched this was before starling came out things like that and i'm going to talk to you about that for a second i found somebody that had this setup and they didn't have our rig they just had this setup so i researched how to get an omnidirectional antenna i actually drilled a hole through the roof which was scary and put a junction box up there and then that runs into the component in here and that's where our pep wave router sits for our internet now, when we first started, I used a company. I'm not gonna mention them. You can go back and look at it. Great company. We, it sufficed for probably the first five, six months on the road. And granted, you know, we're probably spending $175 a month with that company. Uh, the issue was, is that it only had one cell service. And when we got into different places, if there was no towers, then we would have limited cell capacity. And when you get into like Wyoming, Montana, some of these wider areas, even here it's spotty because of all the trees and we're so far away from a city that it's harder to find internet. Some people, what they've done is they've started using Starlink and Starlink is a great option for a lot of people, but you have to, if you don't have clear sky, it comes in and out. They're having issues now with trying to get all the support you know, from all the different things that needs to get done. So the, the fact is, is that there's, there's still a little lacking there and it's not the full blown solution. So I think you still need to have a fail safe and maybe have a backup or, or whatever. If you're working from the road, if you're gonna try to communicate with your family, internet is everything. So we switched to internetonthego.net. I can't say enough good things about that. And they run a Pepway router and in that router comes with two SIM cards and depending right now we're having we just he just i'm going to go pick it up now from ups store he sent us a verizon sim card they're switching from at&t for verizon on one and then the other one is t-mobile so we're running two sim cards when you get to wherever you are the system decides which signal is better on which carrier and then automatically does it and takes the guesswork out so you can communicate. Fabulous system. And the reason I'm still recommending internetonthego.net is because even when they had AT&T as one of the SIM cards, they started having issues with AT&T honoring some of the bandwidth commitments. And we watch everything, YouTube TV, Netflix. We don't really, and the reason we use YouTube TV, side note, is because we wanna stay in contact with what's going on in our home city, which was be Kansas City seeing what's going on with the kids, you know, in their environment. And it, it makes you still feel like part of that community when you're traveling, it gives you peace of mind. Everything we do is on the internet. And this is like, if you're gonna spend money out of the gate, here you go. 
and I believe the Pep Wave router is probably your most expensive option and it might be around that $800 range to a thousand somewhere around there and I don't know I should look on I should have looked online I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll look and see if I can put it in the video so you have it I'll put their website down below I don't have any kind of like codes or anything for discounts pretty it's a pretty good system and I'm really happy now if you want to install what we did up here with the directional antenna things like that you can see that first video we did and I'll put a link up above and you can go watch how we did the install on that and what components I used but I'm really happy with this the reason the antennas tipped backwards is I, I had an incident where I left it up almost the whole time and I hit a low tree branch and broke the bracket so I had to fix the bracket so now I tip it backwards so if we hit anything it kind of reflects and goes up so that's the reason it's that way yeah those are those tips just got four solid ones five if you count the bikes let's see what Sheila thinks about any of those and what her her thoughts are are you ready Look at, Wait, what am I ready for? Like, I'm going to ask you a question. Oh, okay. I'm trying to... She's finishing the cleanup. I know, I know. You're going to ask how we do our setup and cleanup and our storage and stuff. We've done some videos on that, but now we've adapted through the course of time, which yeah, is good. Yeah, we need to... Redo. We need to do another video. I told about the four things. So... Okay. The Reese. Uh-huh. The batteries. Uh-huh. The TPMS system. Okay. From Tire Miner. And then... Um, internet on the go. Okay. I gave a bonus one on most people when they're starting out of the box, they're going to look for an electric bike, right? Because they're, I told them about having to go around and look for campsites and it's just good exercise in general. Well, I mean, you know, is most, <laughs> you move your legs, the bike's doing most of the work, but you're, you're take, moving your joints. Just say don't take exercise advice from <laughs> us. Like we're not your people for that. <laughs> so out of those, out of those, like somebody's going to start their life on the road and i told in this video i was like do not waste time like go ahead and make those upgrades immediately yeah i wish we would have made them all out of the go get go mm -hmm. we did like the reese we did mm -hmm. things but out of all of those what has like been your 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 top which one lighting's better over here which which one's better on your your top of your list well i think this is gonna oh, be good. Oh gosh. We don't talk about our stuff really. We just kind of wing it. I think all of those four that you mentioned, one either protect our investment or they give us peace of mind. So those are two important things. Ooh, listen, her dropping some wisdom. That's nice. Okay, I like that. The one that's probably the game changer for me right now is the lithium. Hmm. Just simply, if we would have just done that from the from the beginning, it has just changed what we're able to do. Mm -hmm. And I can like just even last night being able to sleep all night without the generator kicking on I know we've got something coming up soon where we're gonna leave Fiona and I know that I have peace of mind that the refrigerator yeah our refrigerator is not an RV fridge our fridge is yeah. actually a Samsung so it's just an it runs Regular. off a 2000 watt inverter underneath so just that peace of mind opens up for me opportunities to be back and spend time with family and, and not worry about our food and spoiling. not worry about this investment like it's an investment so so that there, there's your tips now i said in originally in the beginning these are, this is probably like a five thousand for most people because we're not talking solar and putting all the components in we're just talking a battery 200 amp hour battery like i said is like twelve hundred dollars ish and if you're talking about the Reese, it's around that $1,500 ish. And then if you're talking about the TPMS, it's around $500. And then if you're talking about the internet on the go, by the time you do all that, you're probably around that thousand to $1,200 area. So it's, like I said, it's going to be right around that $5,000. Um, but when you first get started mm -hmm. and you're, and you're making this size in a purchase, it provides peace of mind and you're protecting your investment. So I think it's, those are good tips. Mm -hmm. Look at you having some wisdom in your I thought today mind this today. should be good. We really covered some RV stuff. I know not we're not out doing, world. yeah, we're not out traveling and running through and doing stuff. So if you like that content, you know, continue to watch. But, uh, and the bikes, the e-bikes, we didn't count those in there because I don't think you absolutely need those to take off. You can reg use a no, regular you... pedal bike if you need that. <laughs> or Sheila's favorite, you got two solid feet. Yeah, she doesn't mind walking. <laughs> I don't mind walking. <laughs> 
So that's not a necessity. Not a necessity. But I think we boiled it down to some really good quality things for the newbie, or if you've been on the road a while and, and questioning whether you should do something, hopefully this helps you make that decision. Yeah, we second guessed some things in the beginning and we should have just, just done it from the get go. Yep. All right. That's it. Simple video today. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got value of it from value from it. Whatever. Whatever he meant. You know what yeah. he meant. And do all your own research. We're not experts. No. By any We've means. only been out here a little bit. A year and a half. Yeah. And there's been people that have coached us along the way, which has been fabulous. So thanks for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe if you like this kind of info. If you want to see our adventure stuff, you'll see that we've been kind of everywhere. And you can see those videos too. But we'll try to give you some more RV hacks and tips along the way in the upcoming months. Sound good? As we learn it, As we'll we... share it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're, we're going to end it. We're out.